hope my first bake sale is a success. I hope I will be a good businessman like my dad. I hope I can go back to school. I hope I will see my family soon. I hope things will change. I hope. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Today on the show, we're going to be looking at 21st century parenting. And who better to do that with us than the very own Runke Adini. Now, Runke is fondly also called Runke Posh, and she's a loving and very fun and energetic woman. And she's also so enthusiastic. Now, she's going to be speaking to us today about how we can parent our child in the 21st century, because she is also a certified a parenting practitioner, and she's also certified from the Family Life Therapist and practi Practitioner of Neurolinguist Programming. She uses, uh, sorry, she uses these to coach and support parents by Parenting Facebook uh, community, and it's called Parent Right. And she runs training courses online and offline as a public speaker, and she is also the author of Children's Transformational Guide called Right Kid 101. Brunka, thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining us. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, so why did you decide to focus on kids? We understand that kids is very important, you know, that we have, um, we build up good morals in them, but why did you decide to focus on them? Well, I think it's, it's something I stumbled upon. I didn't just um, decide that it was going to be parenting. I started working with children about 13 years ago in the UK. I was actually working as an entertainer. So we, um, I used to um, do a lot of face painting, balloon modeling. I was working in the banks, but in the weekends I worked with children. So that's where the interest started from. And I guess continue to develop my, uh, myself along those lines. Amazing. So when we speak about 21st century children, or rather raising a kid in the 21st century, what is different today that parents need to put a very strong eye on? Um, I think what is different today is um, one of the things that is different is the amount of time that we have with our children. You find that a lot of parents are a lot busier than our parents. There's a lot of distractions now. Um, say for one, a lot of moms are working as opposed to um, the moms that raised us. We have a lot more moms working these days, going, down, going out to put food on the table. Um, so the time spent with the children, a lot less. So we really need to be more intentional in the 21st century. All right. We also know that uh, you have a parenting group on Facebook called Parent Right. That's right. What are some of the most complaints you've seen that parents, you know, complain about? Um, again, it's, there are many, so I'll just um, mention one or few, uh, one or, uh, a few of them. One of the complaints that we have um, is also this time, the time that um, parents don't have with their children. So they have to rush out in the mornings. So they're yelling and screaming and sending the children to school. Um, they're back and the children have to do homework. And then after that, they have to go to bed. Mom is busy, mom is shouting. So a lot of parents say, oh, I can't really see myself raising a child without yelling at my child, without hitting my child, without smacking my child. Is that child. possible? Um, well, it is possible. It's a choice. Yes. <laughs> How many of us can really say that we grew up without our parents yelling at us or smacking us at some point? Mm -hmm. That's why we, I keep going on about being intentional. When we smack, when we yell, when we hit our children, we begin to build barriers, bridges. The, ch the child finds it difficult. Because you find parents say, oh, I know my child very well. Um, I know my child very well. My child very close to me. But then you find that there are secrets. There are so many things that the parent doesn't know about the child. Because the, ch the child doesn't know how mom is going to react. So the child has done something very little. And mom or dad are yelling. They're smacking. So the child is thinking, OK, if, I, if they're yelling because of this little thing, how about if I tell them the big things that I'm doing? So we ran surveys. One of the surveys that we ran of recent, we found that um, a lot of parents, we asked the children, don't put your name on the, on the survey. Just say whatever it is you wish you can tell your mom, whatever it is you feel you can tell your dad. No one's going to tell. Don't put your, we, we don't want to know your, just put your 
just put the comments down. A lot of them are complaining about not liking their school. Um, they don't like, um, they don't like um, the pressure that the parents put on them for their grades. A lot of them are touching themselves. A lot of them are doing so many things, and they wish they can tell their parents. So parents are not really relatable anymore. They just tell them what to do. They talk at the children. Not talk, they don't have a dialogue with the children. So the challenges are many. So we just have to wake up and be more intentional. So then what are the detrimental factors that we are now seeing in millennial kids who have been raised by different parenting styles? It's all around us. Um, we call some of them science students, drama doll children. We see a lot of them all around. Children are not listening anymore. A lot of our children are being raised by drivers and domestic workers. By that I mean house girls, um, nannies. Um, so the character, the morals, the behavior, the way they talk to people, the, the way they talk down at people, you know, we see it all around in society. It's a challenge with our children these days. So how do we, as parents, or I'm not yet a parent, but one of the things I had feared the most is being a parent and not having enough time for my children. Mm -hmm. The truth is that lots of us have our works, we have our careers, but lots of people, like you're a woman, lots mm -hmm. of women are afraid that when it comes to the balance question, we'll not be able to strike a balance. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to really have that balance of being there for your children and being 100% with your career? Sorry, can I just quickly add to that? And the way society is also stigmatizing working mothers as well. We, we've seen it so much, especially of recent, even with people like Tiwa Savage, etc., saying you're a mother and you're working. Meanwhile, what about your son? Mm -hmm. And that stigmatization too. Sorry, I just wanted yeah. to add to that for the conversation. Sure. Um, yes, the, the culture will stigmatize people for doing things. So again, this is where we have to be intentional. In my group online, I did ask a lot of women. I said, why did you become a parent? A lot of people couldn't answer the question. In fact, there was only one person that answered the question. A lot of people couldn't because they just believe when you go to school, finish university, get married, you have kids. That's not the reason to have children. Someone came and said, okay, you have to be fruitful and multiply. Again, when you're fruitful and multiply, it doesn't really mean children. You can be fruitful and you can multiply in your job, in your career, in other things. So it doesn't have to be children. Now, you have to think of your career. You have to be focused on self, focus on environment before you focus on your child. Now, focus on self. You want to have children. How many children are you going to have? Have a conversation with your partner. Are you going to be able to cope? Will I be working? How long will I be working for? You don't just wake up one day, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children, and then you now start trying to balance everything. You start first, think first, plan. Just like we would plan this show, just like we would plan for businesses, just like we would have a mission statement, vision, values for a company. We need to have it for our families as well. When we begin to do it from that approach, we'll find that we have less mistake, and that balance that you're talking about will be possible. Okay, so now how do, you've talked about um, parents not smacking or shouting at their children. On social media, the butt of the jokes, African mothers are the butt of the jokes mm -hmm. because they're saying, oh, your African moms do this. And we know that a lot of us were brought up with, you know, being scolded and being flogged. But you're advocating against that now. Yes, I am. How possible is it for a parent or how should a parent correct a child, discipline a child without raising their voice or hitting them? Again, being intentional. Now, when you have a child, when you ask parents, do you know the personality type of your child? Do you know the love language of your child? They don't know. This is from working over so, so, so for several years. They don't know. So these are the things that we need to first of all begin to know. You see, people will say, okay, if you don't smack your child, put them in a naughty corner. A naughty corner doesn't always work for every child. You can put a, ch a child that is very creative in a naughty corner and that child will be, thrive and be happy. Now, a child that is social will work in a naughty corner because that child wants to be with, uh, where everybody is. Now, there's quality time, there are words of affirmations, there, there's physical touch. Some children like these things. Once you know what your child likes, Take it away from them when you want to discipline them. It works more than when you smack them. When you smack them, you just get an immediate result there and then. If that smacking that they've done over the last 100 years has worked, why is Nigeria like this? Yeah. So basically, you have to first of all understand your child's understand love language. Understand your child's love language and your child's personality and even yours. Focus on self first, focus on the environment and then your child. If you're able to understand who you are, what are your triggers? What makes you angry? Because you find that moms will go to work, come back, and vent on the children. So they'll think about it. When you ask them, so, oh, how do you feel after smacking the child? Oh, I feel so rotten. Yeah. You feel rotten because you, vent, you, you didn't actually deal with the issue. You took it home. You just took it out. I'm just, you've had a long day. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. And that's what, so we need, really need to think. A lot of intentionality needs to go into place. Now, let's even speak of this issue when it comes to smacking a bit more. For example, we see in places like America, their constitution states that it's okay to smack a child, but there's a limit to it. In Nigeria, to my best of knowledge, we don't have anything in the constitution that basically draws that line. Mm -hmm. So a lot of parents go forth, and we hear of children being belted. We mm -hmm. hear of children... Um, 
be having canes used on them, mm -hmm. not only at home, but also in the school environment. Mm -hmm. Where is that line and how does it need to be drawn and what's the message we need to send across? Well, we need to revise our policies, a lot of our policies. We have people like Taiwa Kinlami that work on policies and he's also advocating along these lines. You find that even in schools, there are policies. So it, it, in schools, we're not supposed to smack at all, but it still happens in schools. So the policies are not being adhered to. So if somebody smacks a child, the teacher smacks a child, what are the consequences? That's why you find that some parents will actually go to the school and go and smack the, 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 the teacher as well. And then we use the word smack and hit and beat interchangeably, really. In America, if you smack someone, abro your child abroad, what is it that you're doing, really? And when you beat in Nigeria, which is what a lot of people do, they will beat their children, bruise them, they will have different colors. That's abuse. That's abuse. And but the smacking, <laughs> like some people make, some people who make, um, who are advocating for smacking will tell you, you can flog the child on the palm. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to such a person who believes in the quote, spare the rod and spoil the child? I would say the person should go and also do some research in the Bible. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. That is in the Bible. The rod is a rod of correction, a rod of love that corrects, that guides, just like the shepherd uses with, to guide the sheep. It's not a rod that physically hits. So if you check for the rod in the Bible, all the places where it's been mentioned, you would find that it's only that one that Nigerian parents like to hold on to. <laughs> yeah. They will not look for the one where it says that it, it's a rod that loves. It's a good rod that has done miracles, that has directed a child. No, they just want to hold on because they say 5% of people think, 10% of people think they think, and 85% would rather die than think. If you really think, you will see that there are other solutions, other strategies to raising your child, disciplining your child, as opposed to hitting your child all the time. Now, Ronke, if you could give three tips to parents who are out there watching the show on how to raise a millennial child, what are the tips that you would give? Spend time with your child, know your child's personality type, and know yourself. All right, you also help on your Facebook group um, with people, you help your parents when it comes to picking domestic staff because you're trying to advocate against abuse by domestic staff. Mm -hmm. What are the things that, first of all, do you, you must approve of people using domestic staff, of course? I, well, domestic staff, I do. You do, Let right? Me just to make the conversation. Short. Okay, I want to, because I would say that if you give people tips on how to um, choose their domestic staff, yes. then maybe you do approve domestic staff. So for those who have to use domestic staff who have no other choice, mm -hmm. what are the things they should look out for? Because we find a few days ago, someone showed me a picture of a man who pretended to be a woman. He was dressed as a woman to be a domestic staff mm -hmm. just so we could abuse mm -hmm. people's children. So what are the things one can take into consideration when picking a domestic staff? Well, um, where is this person coming from? Where are you getting this uh, domestic staff from? A lot of people will say agents. Who are these agents? Are they registered agents? Most of them aren't. They're just somebody that uh, maybe your driver now knows um, somebody in the village. This is usually how it works. Now you have a few more agents these days. So you really need to do your background checks. The agents might say they have done the checks, but you need to also try and visit. So if they say they're living in the Korodu or something, if you can, do. If you know someone in the village, try and do some background checks, find out about who the person is. Does the person have to live inside your home with your children? You find parents that the house help also sleeps in the bedroom with the children. A lot of abuse happens that way. Who are you bringing into your home? So we need to think of our families as a nation. You know, when you go into um, to another country, you need a visa. When these people are coming into your home, they need a visa. They need to pass certain criteria in your house. So you can't bring somebody um, from the village and say, come and run my palace. This is where the friction also happens. So again, know who you are bringing into the house. Train the person that you're bringing into the, into, into the, into the home to be with your children. If they don't have to live in the home, please, because some parents don't want to do anything, let's be real. They want this person to work from 5 o'clock to 11 a, um, p.m. I, I've spoken to so many nannies. They are overstretched, they are overworked, they are tired. And again, they break and do things to the children. So who are you bringing into the child? Do you even need a domestic worker in your house? So I have someone that comes to my house to clean. And when she's done, she goes. I don't want her to sleep in my house. I want her to have next to nothing inter um, interaction with my child. But that's me. Now, somebody that has 10 children, five children, however many children, you need that support. Who is supporting you? What training have you given to the person? We don't like to train them. We just tell them things as they go. This is how to put on the microwave. This is how to do the kettle. This is how to... Now, you, I have, when I used to do, train nannies, you'd find that some people would actually send them to get thorough training, even how to mop. Some of them don't know how to mop because they don't have those kind of flaws. They don't, they've never mopped before. And then you bring them into your house to do certain kind of chores. So 
There's so many things, but let's just treat them like somebody coming into a new country, give them this job, specific, job um, description to do, give them things to do and get to know them. And now, you recently you know, wrote a book, sorry to trip that, you recently wrote a book, Right Kid 101, that's and right. tell us about it. Okay, Right Kid 101, um, again, through research, the reason why I've, I wrote um, the book was because parents are not really spending a lot of time with their children because they are busy. So we, we will continue to hear it's not going to go away in a hurry. Now, how can the child begin to take ownership of their lives? How can the child begin to understand certain things about their life, their value system, their mindset, their identity? You know, children will, even children in university, they'll go out and find out that um, there are people that are gay, uh, people that are bisexual, there are people that do, they don't know anything because mom and dad have not spoken to them. Mom and dad are not even able to speak to them because their own parents didn't speak to them about it. So this book, enlightens and empowers a child, helps the children to take ownership of their life from a very, very early age. So they begin to know all these things that I've mentioned. And then it's also a conversation starter. They begin to ask questions. So say, for example, there's public and private parts being discussed in the, in the book. A lot of parents will tell you that it's only the chest, the vagina, the penis that are, are public and private parts. But they, again, if a Muslim's legs, that was a hijab, is her leg a public or private part? It's different for her. Now, your lips, your face, your arms are open. You can call them um, pri um, public parts, right? But then for a child, if now a predator comes and is stroking that child's arm and lips and face, yes, it's public, but is it appropriate? So we now go as far as telling them that there are some parts that are sensitive and there are some parts that should not be touched, even if they're open, so that the child knows that if somebody is coming to stroke me, it's a red alert instantly. So these are some of the things that the book covers. Absolutely. So if people want to get more information on the book and also more information on you, your Facebook page, everything that you're doing, how can people contact? Um, Room Care Posh, just um, use Room Care Posh on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. I don't think there's any other Room Care Posh um, using that handle. And for the book, it's Right Kid 101. We have a website. We also have an Instagram handle. What's the website? Um, RightKid101.com. Okay. Yes. And the Instagram handle as well? RightKid101.com. So parents can as well get these books and for their children. You can get well. the children via the website. Now, for parents who want to even be a part of your group as well, is the group open to everybody? Because there are people <laughs> who have questions yeah, sure. who might be interested, you know, on how to be a better parent. Mm -hmm. Is the group open to the public? It's open to the public. You have to ask a few questions, but it's open to the public. We'll check your t timeline because we have, you know what it's like online. Exactly. <laughs> yes, but it is open to the public. It's All a right. closed group. Okay, great. So they should contact you, Ron Posh. What's the name of the group on Facebook? Parents Right. Parents Right. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Much for Thank joining you so us. much. Thank so you, ladies. Much, I'm uh, we're speaking with Ronke Adeni, fondly called Ronke Posh, who is a parenting coach and has dropped tips and nuggets on how to be a 21st century child. And basically, even for the parents as well, with regards to bringing up your children in this day and age, you might want to join the group on Facebook, Parents Right, and also get the book for your children to ensure that they learn and understand their own self-identity in a society that is fraught with so much societal pressure. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank, Thank you so much, ladies. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.